Next. Oh, we got the entire history of the NFL. Now, I find this is a very, very perfect video. Um, Because, you know, I played football growing up, but at the same time, I never watched it. You know what I'm saying? So learning the history of the sport will be amazing. All right. Now, like I said before, um, I did watch around like 2010s, 2015. That's around the time I stopped. That's a, that's when I was watching and then I stopped. So everything um, prior or after that, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Okay. Uh, so I feel like this is a perfect video. So, hey, if you want more videos like this, hit that like button, hit that sub button. Legends, how you know, the do NFL it. used to look like this. That the field used to be this small, or the players didn't use helmets. Much has changed throughout the years. So, how did we get here? Well, it all started back in 1892, when the sport wow. was stolen. England made up this crazy game called rugby, using this field and this ball. So, Americans just took everything and oh, called it football. Oh, I never knew the that. The was, they made football extremely deadly. Because, well, they both didn't wear any helmets or pads. Instead of tackling, football players would fist fight, bite each other's ears off, or what? even gouge each other's eyes out. It was huh? so bad that, by 1906, over a hundred people had died from playing football, and thousands of others became disabled. But in 1920, football became a game instead of a crime when a player named Jim Thorpe formed the Jim first ever Thorpe. pro football league and finally introduced some rules which stopped players from dying so much. They got some shoulder pads and leather helmets, told everyone to stop fist fighting, and legalized passing the ball. So now that things were official... And this is why I actually say, name. even from back then, I, and even when I react to um, rugby, I always say, like, y'all are better than me. I'm going to say that right now. Y'all better than me, bro, because I could never do it. All right, I could never do it. Run around out there... F fighting okay now if somebody try to fight me i'm gonna fight back obviously but i'm just saying just hitting with no pads like what is this you know what i'm saying this is very unsafe at all like zero percent safe every time a, a, the play is snapped i am fighting for my life okay like just look at these little clips right here fighting and legalized passing like the ball. anything so can happen at any time things were official they decided to name the league calling it the american professional football association or apfa yeah that name was booty so two years later they changed it and in 1922 the world was finally blessed with the nfl okay now there's 14 chapters in the nfl's history and next up we got 1922 an era where the league was terrible there was no Super Bowl, no game Damn. schedule. I mean, uh, teams would literally play whenever the they want. What am I and when watching? The, players, the pay was so bad, it wasn't a full-time gig. So the league was filled with milkmen and coal miners and jerseys. And let's just say that you were a fan that could look past all of that. Were you really going to support the Columbus Panhandles, <laughs> O-Line Universal Tractors, or whatever the hell this is? Yeah, what those were real NFL teams. It was impossible to be a fan, and the NFL knew it too, because the league just wasn't growing over the next 20 years. So these are the top, it. these are the, the main teams right here? Indian, Indians, okay. So that must be the Redskins. Brooklyn, Brook, oh, Brooklyn Lions, okay. All right, you'll steal our shit, whatever. Uh, that says D, I don't know what that means. That might be Detroit. Tigers, no. I don't know. Chicago, we see Chicago. Cardinals, Yellow Jackets, Buffalo, Dayton Triangles. <laughs> the fuck? Bro, these are the worst names I've ever heard in my life, bro. Hartford Blues, Los Angeles Buccaneers, Milwaukee Badgers. Yeah, bro. Worse. I tough. mean, 14 different teams went bankrupt, and wow. those that did survive. Had to take out loans to pay their players. Plus, the NFL wasn't even the best football league. College football was literally 20 times more popular. Wow. It was okay. looking like the beginning of the end. Okay, wow. But in 1949, the NFL came up with a genius solution, implementing three key changes that no other league had at the time. They added set game schedules, started Oh, so I'm about, that's what I'm about to say, bro, because I know Detroit is one of the like main um states or cities for every sport okay even even with hockey 
Detroit Red Wings. I, I don't think it was called the Red Wings back then, but Detroit was always like the main, like you know, what I'm saying one of the main ones. So that's why I was wondering, like. I know we had some type of team or something. So I, I've seen it now. They had at the time. They added set game schedules, started okay. televising games, and to help with reducing injuries, the NFL introduced plastic helmets. The inventor sure plastic has helmets. Yo. Try it out. What the? F Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Yo, I think insane. Like the what the? This thing is kicking him in the head. What the fuck? What the fuck? Right on the old. Yo. Place. No. Okay. Like, just imagine, bro. Like, this could have went so wrong so fast. Oh, my God. Bro could have had 17 concussions, bro. Yeah, along with some new teams, like the Colts, Browns, and 49ers. And all these changes work, because the 1958 NFL Championship had become the most watched sporting event in TV history. See, the two biggest teams in the league, the New York Giants and Baltimore Colts, were facing the Colts. And after going back and forth all game, Two teams went into the first ever sudden Baltimore death Colts. overtime. So everyone and their mom tuned in. I'm talking 45 million people, literally okay. nine times more than the year before. And after the Colts took home the W, it became forever nicknamed the greatest game ever played. Wow, okay. never heard about that before. In the 1960s, a rival league was formed called the AFL, which introduced teams like the Texans, Chargers, Bills, Raiders, and Patriots. And their owners were oh, way more that's rich where this come from? way more... That's what this come from. Because the only reason I know about the AFL is literally because of um, Madden. Okay. Madden. And this is why I say, like, obviously playing a video game is bad because this is a video game. And you're not going to really get that much knowledge. But at the same time, you do get a little bit of knowledge because they have stuff in there that you would that you would just see. And then, you know, just like now, I'm making the connections. You know what I'm saying? Um, just same with players. Like it might be some players on Madden that, you know, it might be he might not be a star. Like he ain't got no like no crazy abilities, but he's still more decent than normal players on the game. So I see him going crazy on there. I'm like, dang, who is that? Like, what's his name? And then I look his highlights up. He's sweet. I'm like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. So it's, it's it has its downsides because I'm not a real true. You feel me? But at the same time, Bills, a little Raiders, bit, and a little Patriots. bit. And their owners were way more rich and way more greedy. So they were trying to take the NFL down by any means necessary, like stealing their players, nabbing their TV contracts. They even paid players so much that the NFL couldn't afford to stay in business. So the NFL had no choice what but to play dirty back by stealing the AFL star players like Pete Gogolak. But after seven years of back and forth, it became clear nobody was winning. So to avoid bankruptcy, the two decided to merge and become one league called the NFL. Okay. They Again. Yeah, now, right, we've got nine more chapters about the NFL's history Michael coming Jackson. up. And that's not all. We'll talk about the future, too. Because the NFL will be implementing artificial intelligence that predicts plays before they even happen. And the league wants to replace refs with AI. No, yeah, no. No. changing a lot. But no. you want to make a change, too. You no. should check out today's sponsor, no. BetterHelp. Listen, no. we all know no. therapy is important. No. And that we've been going to better sleep. Right? You up with BetterHelp. Bro, is not are you serious? Month, AI? Bro, we already see how bad the refs is on 2k okay i know fuck 2k we also we already see how bad the refs is in real life okay so you mean tell me if a real human being can't make good calls we supposed to expect an ai what 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 come on bro. one of the most controversial offer in supporting the champ now, in 1972, one of the most controversial moments in NFL history would happen. During the final play of a 1972 AFC playoff game, and here's the problem. Back then, once the ball left a quarterback's hands, an offensive player could not catch a pass that had been touched by another offensive player, unless what? a defensive player had touched the ball. But when you watch That's the tape back, so it's impossible to tell if a defensive oh, player hit ever actually touched the ball. He definitely so this hit it. This is some 4K footage. Yo, W video, bro. This is some 4K footage right here. I've never seen this. This the player. Yo, touch the ball. Look at this. This is real life. So, oh, this <laughs> instantly sparked outrage. So Mark now the referee leaves that huddle and he goes over to the dugout on the Pittsburgh Steelers dugout. side, 
And then he gets on the phone. Well, they had an actual dug- call to someone. They, they didn't even have sidelines. They had a dugout. Marie leaves what? that huddle, and he goes over to the dugout on the wow. Pittsburgh Steelers side, and he gets on the phone. And he makes a call to someone. Yeah. Then he hangs up. Then he walks out into the middle field and says, touchdown. Five or ten minutes later. We were in the locker room. John came in and just said, guys, we got screwed. They call it the immaculate reception. I call it the immaculate deception. Because the Steelers became a dynasty, winning three Super Bowls in four years, with nine Hall of Fame players on their team. It was unthinkable, wow. but they weren't alone, because the Dallas Cowboys won two Super Bowls, and were actually so good, they became known as America's team. But nobody won like the Miami Dolphins, because to this day, they're the only team in NFL history to have completed a perfect oh. record season, going 17 and up. That's it. It's over. Let's go, Nick. That's right, man. Oh, shit. However, in 1980, the NFL was forced to prepare for its funeral. Whoa. See, over the last decade, there were three separate plane crashes carrying sports teams. Oh. From the Marshall University football team to the University of Evansville and the United States boxing team, all resulting in the deaths of 191 people. Good evening, a chartered jet carrying the Marshall University football team home to West Virginia crashed last night as it tried to land at the Huntington Airport. Damn. All 75 persons aboard were killed. It was the worst plane crash in the United States so far this year. This shook the sports world Damn. and made the NFL completely change their views on safety. So they cooked up all kinds of guidelines, like the disaster draft, where if a team suffers a tragedy, the league will host an emergency draft to replace their players. But the NFL wanted to improve safety on the field too, so they implemented stricter rules on contact to the head, neck, and face, making sure the chances of disaster were slim to none, yeah, which is exactly what the league needed. In 1985, the 49ers drafted the greatest wide receiver of all time, a man who still holds the most receiving yards in NFL history. And let me know where y'all rank. Of where do y'all rank Jerry Rice right now? I feel like he top one. Okay, well, I wouldn't say top one. He, I mean, I don't know, because I got Calvin Johnson, Randy Moss, and Jerry Rice. Okay, so the Lions fan enemy want to say Calvin Johnson's number one. Okay, um. Just off straight athleticism and just pure like entertainment. Randy Moss. Randy Moss is very entertaining. Um, but just Jerry Rice Jerry Rice is just so smooth with it though, you know? Let me know y'all opinion though. Still holds the most receiving oh, no. yards in NFL history and has the most touchdowns of all time. The one and only Jerry Rice. But he wasn't the only legend on the Niners, because he teamed up with legendary quarterback Joe Montana, and together, those two dominated the rest of the 80s, winning two Super Bowls together. These dudes were NFL stars, but by the 90s, an unlikely star would come around to steal the spotlight. Michael Jackson. <laughs> the Super Bowl was the most popular thing on TV, pulling in an average 80 million viewers per year. But there was a problem. The halftime show sucked. And they knew that if they wanted to increase their viewership, they had to get their act together, do something that would get everyone talking about the Super Bowl. So they called up the biggest star in the world, Michael Jackson. And he put on the performance of a lifetime, with viewership exploding to an insane 133 million. Fireworks, hurricane machine. So that's where this come from, bro. Cause I've seen this video actually pop up on my YouTube timeline of Michael Jackson at a Super Bowl halftime, which I didn't know it, it even happened until I seen the video pop up. Uh, so, I, okay, so this, it was in the 80s? Wow, okay. And I feel like the 80s, yeah, the 80s was probably Michael Jackson prom, too. I mean, his prom was really his whole career, but, <laughs> you know, da -da, yeah. Insane, 133 wow, okay. million. Fireworks, hurricane machines, and the moonwalker himself. <laughs> the centerpiece of the highest rated television broadcast of all time. This was the moment that halftime shows became the must-see event of the year. I mean, uh, people would tune in just to see the halftime show. And that's still the case to this day. W, Michael Jack. <gasps> It was oh! 1994. Everyone was just going about oh their day God. when news broke that the ex-wife of one of the NFL's biggest stars, O.J. Simpson, was stabbed to death. People were shocked and started to question if O.J. had anything to do with it. But just a couple of days after... Let me the, in the comments, bro. 
Do y'all think OJ did it? Yes or no? <sighs> nah, it's crazy because I didn't even know about this situation. You know what I'm saying? But I watched a documentary on on this whole this or OJ whole life. Um, and yeah, bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. He did it, bro. I'm gonna be honest, bro. He did it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the real reason I know he did it, okay? The real reason I know he did it is because at the end of the day, bro, no matter who you believe in, what religion you believe in, you can never go against the higher power, okay? You can never go against the higher power. He knows everything. Um, he sees everything. He sees your thoughts. He sees you when you're alone at night. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you be on your phone looking up at 4 a.m., he sees it. He sees it. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you. He sees it. All right? So you might can get away. You know, OJ, the reason why OJ got away is because he had money. Okay? He had a lot of money. And when you have a lot of money, you can do a lot of shit. Okay? And he was already loved. And on top of that, back then, it was the whole um, police killings. Uh, police, police was killing a lot of black people. So black people was already enraged because of that, and then they they gonna try to paint the whole picture about OJ. Uh, so that's it was like the whole thing, like you know what I'm saying. If you watch the documentary, you definitely know what I'm talking about. But he definitely did it, bro. And the reason, the, the true reason I know is after it happened, after he got out, after he, you know what I'm saying, uh, what they call it, uh, extradited or something like that. After that happened, you see his life went downhill, bro. He was never the same. No one liked him. You know what I'm saying. And then. Later in his life, he go back to jail for some dumbass shit. Like that's just that's just that's that's how God gets you. He won't get you ten minutes after you do it. Not even a year. Years. It's gonna take years, bro. It's gonna come back though. You know what I'm saying? It's coming back. And that's how I know it happened, bro. I know it. Cause if he didn't do it, he, his life would have still been cool, bro. But he went he went spiraling out of control, bro. Sean, yeah, it's to question if OJ had anything okay. to do with it, but just a couple of days after the murder, every TV station was hit with a breaking news alert saying, OJ Simpson vanishes after being charged for a crime his fans never dreamed he could commit. Unbelievably, the most watched, most... Then they, talking about, about then they was talking about, uh, he, he was already beating on her, like, multiple times. They had already called the police, or she called the police on him because she was beating on him. He, bro, I'm telling you, bro. He bro did it, bro. <laughs> like, bro, he, he first of all, he get drunk. He already got a super big ego. He get drunk and then argue with his girl. That's the main recipe for disaster, bro. And then on top of that, she she go with another dude. You know what I'm saying? That's why I tell y'all, bro. Y'all messing with these girls or these niggas, females? You can't, bro. Don't even do it. I know it's the cool thing to do. Oh, I fucked the nigga, bitch. I fucked the nigga bitch. No, bro. That shit not cool. Because you don't know who you fucking with. All right? I bet you. And then on top of that, I bet you. All right? He, he probably knew. Because because he killed another. It was it was a, a girl and a man. So, I'm pretty sure the boyfriend or whoever the dude that she was messing with, I'm pretty, pretty sure he knew that her ex was OJ. I'm pretty. It's, it's no way he don't know that. So, you know OJ a little crazy. You know, he know where you stay at. He catch you like he. Remember I said he ego problem. He drunk. Like it's just. And in America has gone missing tonight. He apparently disappeared from under the noses of his lawyers and doctors this afternoon. Dodged an arranged uh, surrender and vanished into the Los Angeles haze. There is nothing like this in memory. Nothing. I understand we we're gonna go to a live picture in Los Angeles. Okay. Police believe he is crazy. in that vehicle. Police radio is saying that Simpson, the passenger in the car, has a gun at his head. This was insane. Like, just imagine a player today, like Tom Brady, going on the run for a murder. It was unlike anything the and world. Then he doing shit seen. like this. This is what I'm talking about. He doing shit like this. Hi, that's literally showing you're guilty, motherfucker. What are you doing this for? If you was not guilty, you know damn well. Damn well, you would be cooling, bro. You would be chilling. Only way people really convict people is if, you know, first they're black. We'll just say it like that. All right. You a black person, a black nigga. That's how I look at you. A black nigga. You a black nigga in here. Um, all the stereotypes. You probably been robbing or whatever. So they, they already going to try to paint that picture on you. That's number one. Then number two, um, you ain't got no money. All right. Money saves you. We are, that's, that's in the day, bro. Money saves you. You know what I'm saying? 
Money fixes a lot of things. So if you ain't got no money and they try to paint a picture on you, you're fucked. You're cooked. All right? You're cooked. You ain't doing shit. All right? You ain't got no money. You, you can't pay for the best lawyers in, in, in the whole world. You know what I'm saying? And they paint a picture of you. But think about the reverse. If you already rich, you already have clout, you already have all these things and you get co- get um uh, indicted or whatever, then you should be straight, bro. You know so what I'm saying? Once you word should got be straight. around. Over 95 million people tuned in to watch OJ speed down the LA highway as he narrowly missed hitting civilians on the road. Highway Patrol. Yeah, um, I think I just saw OJ send him on the uh, 5 freeway. And, they, and we like looked at him, you know? Uh-huh. And he like stared us down like he was deaf. And finally, oh, after yo. a 45 minute chase, OJ surrendered. But the case was far from over, because as OJ went to trial, he argued that he had nothing to do with the murders, the evidence had been mishandled, oh, and that the cops had been racist against him. But despite yep. his pleas, all signs pointed to OJ being guilty. Oh, the entire public knew it. Like, why would you run from the police like that if you're innocent? But in the end, one crucial piece of evidence saved OJ's life. Item number nine, the Rockingham Blood. Bro, stupid, right, bro. Time, the people would ask that Mr. Russ Simpson stepped forward and try on the, the uh, glove recovered at Bundy as well as the glove recovered at What? Yes. They say stop taking his pills so his hand can swell up. And he had two gloves on. Come on, bro. You're not fitting it. Iconic picture right there. All right. Thank you, Captain. It makes no sense. It doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. We, the jury, uh, are loved in title action. That's the word. Or insult James Simpson, not guilty of a oh, crime yeah. of murder. Yeah, and he had all charges dropped against him. To this day, though, people still think OJ really did it. Let me know in the comments. It's because of things like this. Just did you do it? <laughs> no, and then he started trolling. Yeah, I forgot sure. about OJ that. Me that uh, he had a surprise for me, and I genuinely was surprised. I think it was his idea of a joke. <laughs> Nigga started trolling. What the fuck? Now, this moment really marked the beginning nigga, huh? of the NFL. Bro, what is wrong with this nigga, bro? <laughs> now. That shit not even funny, bro, because two niggas are dead, bro. Like, I want to laugh, but it's, if two people are dead, bro, that shit is fucked up. Niggas trolling. And then he say he wrote a book? What they say? If I did it? Motherfucker. If I did it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, my God. Now, this moment really marked the beginning of the NFL players going off the deep end. Because the rest of the 90s were just as unhinged. Ray Carruth hired a hitman to shoot his girlfriend. Alonzo what? Spellman threatened to kill himself with a landline telephone. All because his doctor was late to his appointment. And <laughs> Cecil okay. Collins was arrested for breaking into a woman's house to watch her sleep. He just stood there and oh, watched. No. Yeah, bro. Next chapter, please, please. Now, while crime ruled the 90s, cash ruled the 2000s. <laughs> Between merchandise, TV deals, and sponsorships, Business was booming. The NFL was now worth 12 billion, and wow. players wanted their piece of the bag too. So to keep their stars happy, the NFL was forced to pay up big time, which had Brett Favre now making 47 million for seven years. Randy Moss was making 66 Matt million Turk. for eight years. Fuck is that? No, even safeties like Lawyer Malloy were making 35 million for seven years. Earth? NFL Ooh. players were getting Q money. But in 2001, <laughs> Drew Bledsoe smashed all the records. We just seen he was this. considered the best quarterback in the league, and the Patriots wanted to make sure their star was taken care of, so they offered a record-breaking. 103 million dollar contract wow, for bro. 10 years wow, but bro. by 2001 all of that money went to waste because immediately after drew suffered a collapsed lung and was sidelined for the entire season the patriots were the favorite to win it all that season and now they were missing their star quarterback and had to rely on their backup a guy with no experience was the 199th pick in the draft you saw this Tall, gangly looking kid. <laughs> Looked like having ever seen a weight room. Huh? Ran a 5 2 something. One of the slowest quarterbacks in the combine. Bro, slower than Lyman. Tom Brady has been put in the quarterback and Drew Bledsoe taken out. Tom Brady, the second year quarterback from the University of Michigan. Yes, sir. Who, uh, threw only three passes in his rookie year last year. One for three. Michigan produced the best players. His first duty Come on, of 2001. So apparently, Bledsoe. Knocked around a little more than it appeared, and uh, Brady 
In charge against five defensive backs. This man came in and instantly became a star, leading the team to a Super Bowl and winning it all that season. Brady quickly became the face of the Patriots, and soon after, the entire NFL. Yeah, if it wasn't for Drew's injury, Tom Brady might have never happened. Oh, but wait, by 2003, what? there was another quarterback oh, who was what? dominating the field. A man that could move like a running back, throw bombs like Tom Brady, and that defense is dropping to their knees. I'm talking about Michael Vick. See, for the first time ever, the league saw a quarterback that could beat you with no help and could run into the end zone at any moment. Before Michael Vick, quarterbacks were mostly handing off or throwing the ball. But now, you had to worry about a quarterback being a damn running back. <laughs> and the style of play paved the way for future dual threats, like Lamar Jackson, Cam Newton, and Russell Wilson. At this Sam point, Cam the Newton. NFL was in its prime. But something happened in 2004 that scarred NFL oh, fans for life. You're lame. Bro. You So we could party together. It was okay. the Super Bowl 38 Jessica halftime Simpson. show. Over 144 million people watching live. You had little kids to grandparents all huddled around their TV. And they were all excited to see two of the biggest stars in the world perform. Janet Jackson and Justin uh, Timberlake. So when they took the stage, <laughs> the world shook. Uh, but during the final minutes of their epic performance, slapping her Justin ass. was supposed to rip off a part of Janet's costume to reveal another layer of her outfit. But instead, she had a wardrobe malfunction. And this went down as the legendary nipple gate. Was it planned, Janet? No, it was not what, planned. Well, what people don't understand is he was to take and rip the piece off that he did. The leather but, piece. Right, but more came off than what was supposed yeah. to. Now, over the next three years, the only exciting thing that happened was Peyton Manning having his glow up, winning his second MVP, and taking home his first ring. And also, the NFL decided to ban really? touchdown celebrations. Oh, One of really? the dumbest decisions the NFL's ever made. But in 2007, <laughs> it really hit the fan, because an entire team's reputation was ruined. See, it was the first week of the season, and the Patriots were destroying the Jets. Able to go long for Moss. Moss has his first Look at what I'm saying, bro. Patriot. Now, I already know Megatron is literally doing the same exact thing. I think we've seen it. Literally, on the goal line, Megatron lined up, and it was two people trying to guard him. No type of, no type of disguise defense. No, two people lined up against Calvin Johnson. Two people. Like it was a like it was a punt return, you know what I mean? So I already know Megatron is damn near the same exact player, but it's just something about Randy Moss, bro. And I have to be honest, it's just something about Randy Moss. Jets. Like just three, just running past three people right here, just casually, like you know what I'm saying? Now we know Megatron do the same exact like shit. The Patriots same exact thing. Somehow knew every one of the Jets' moves. And that's because they did. Because it turned out they were spying on the Jets using hidden cameras. And when the NFL launched an what? investigation, they found out the Pats had been creeping on not only the Jets, but the entire league for almost eight years. Wow. Yeah, doing it was a bunch this. of damn cheaters. So the NFL fined their ass 250 grand and made them give up their 2008 first round pick. Ooh. But despite getting caught <laughs> and having a target on their back, Nothing could stop the Patriots. Because that same season, they went on to dominate the league. I mean, they managed to put together the greatest team the NFL had ever seen. They had guys like Randy Moss, Lawrence Maroney, Vince Wilfork, and Sammy Morris all teamed up with Tom Brady. And together, they went 16 and up. All they had to do was win the Super Bowl, and they would have completed a perfect season. So, going into the big game, it seemed like a lock for the Patriots. And with a minute left, with the Patriots up, it looked like they were going to go undefeated until the Giants made the greatest catch in NFL history. Pressure from Thomas off the edge. Eli Manning <laughs> like what the stays on his feet, airs it out down the field. It is caught by Tyree. Oh, my God. This ball is thrown, and Tyree just goes up for it That's like a same. basketball player. Harrison trying to knock it down. And Eli, man, I don't know how he got out of there. I thought he was on the yeah, ground. Yeah, how did he got out of there? And then he came out of the pile and just slammed It's funny because Eli Manning literally looks like a little brother. Like, I just seen his little face when he was running around. He looked like a little brother, bro. 
How do you blow the coverage, bro? How do you do that? The Giants have won the Super Bowl. And they won 16 and 1. That's fun for Brady and the Patriots. This was the worst moment of their lives. Keep in mind, though, he was only 30 years old. So he knew he would return next year better than ever. Well, that is if he wasn't killed. Because in 2009, the Saints were caught trying to kill quarterbacks. Oh, See, I think I remember it is. The Vikings filed a complaint to the NFL accusing the Saints of purposely trying to injure them. Yeah. So we launched an investigation into the Saints wow. and discovered something sinister. Today, our partners at Yahoo Sports uncovered a recording and on it, a New Orleans coach graphically telling players to inflict injuries in a big playoff game. You know, tie at the top. You know, a lot of guys up at the top. Kill the head, the body will die. What the f Kill the head, the body will die. Kill the head. Everything in the world to make sure we kill Frank Gore's head. What the f <laughs> Nah, bro, I ain't gonna lie. Bro, damn, I gotta go to jail for that shit, bro. He gotta go to jail for that shit, dog, nah, bro. That's a little bit too far, bro. You don't just say shit like that, bro. You can't just say shit like that, bro. You can't say shit like that. That shit isn't. No, 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 no. That's actually tough. What? Kill Frank Gore's head. Kill Frank. We want him running sideways. We want him running sideways. We want him running sideways. Kill Frank Gore's head. Kill Frank Gore's head. We want his head sideways. The Saints were giving players bonuses for tearing ACLs, hitting guys with existing injuries, and even paying them 35 grand to try and permanently injure the Vikings quarterback. But in the end, the Saints got hit the hearts, because four of their players were suspended for a total of 31 games, and two of their coaches were suspended for the entire season. Wow. Over the next few years, <laughs> we saw some of the most ridiculous moments in NFL history. Marshawn Lynch had a touchdown that was so crazy, all the fans cheering caused a 2.0 magnitude earthquake. Brett Favre sent nudes to a Jets employee and got fined 50 grand, <laughs> and a snowstorm yeah. caused the Vikings' whole stadium to collapse, causing 18.3 million in damages. It was ridiculous. Ah. But the most ridiculous thing was how the NFL almost ruined the league for a season. See, the refs felt like they were overworked and underpaid. So they went on strike, saying the NFL what? was a bunch of cheap asses. And they weren't going to work until they got a fair deal. But the NFL responded by laughing in their face and hiring the yeah, worst bro. replacements imaginable. You had refs that had only ever refed in a high school game. And even some that had only refed in a lingerie Ooh. football oh, game. Yeah. So those were the guys now refing. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Shit, you start doing a little girl football, you know what I'm saying? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. And even some that have only refed in a lingerie know. football league. Yeah, yeah, those were the guys now refing in the NFL. And it went about as horribly as you'd expect. They were out there blowing calls and completely ruining games. Like the fail mayor, where at the last second, the Seahawks won on a catch that should not have counted. And fans lit up the NFL starting the hashtag, things better than replacement <laughs> yeah, refs, and even started boycotting the NFL entirely. Hell, even Obama tweeted about it. Thankfully though, that nightmare only lasted about three weeks, because the NFL finally made a deal with their refs, giving them a major increase in salary and benefits. And afterwards, the commissioner even apologized they to the fans. Asked, though. Uh, they should change. With our fans. And we're sorry to have to bring our fans to that. We're sorry to bring uh, the general public to that. Well, and the rest of the decade, had some of the most legendary Ooh. moments in NFL history, like OBJ's all-time catch, the Packers' miracle in Motown, and the Seahawks throwing away the Super Bowl at the one-yard line. Yeah, that one hurts. There's one moment, though, that'll be remembered for all the wrong reasons. The biggest cheating scandal in sports history. Uh. See, during the 2015 playoffs, the New England Patriots were taking on the Colts when Tom Brady threw a pass that got intercepted. But instead of celebrating, Colts were pissed because the football felt deflated. So they took the ball <laughs> over to the sideline and showed the ref. And what happened next shocked the entire football world. It's the latest NFL scandal and it's dominating the airwaves. Why the keep doing shit? Deflate gate. Deflate gate. <sighs> now I think about it, bro. Because we all know Patriots, they're one of the greatest teams ever. Definitely the greatest team of the 20,000s. So my question is, and they got all these allegations of how they cheating. So, is it more things that they've done that we just don't know about? Think about it. It's probably more shit they've done to win all these games than we know about. We only know about, what, two things? 
Two things. It's probably more, bro. I'm telling you. Because if, first of all, if they, they already got caught once. And they're now they're doing a, something else. They didn't learn their lesson, bro. That means they're doing more. They're doing more, bro. This is only the two things we found out about. Only two. And it's actually crazy because I heard about the Tom Brady deflating balls and stuff like that. But I didn't know. I, I just I didn't I didn't actually see like the game that it happened or like that. So this is actually my first time seeing this. But I always heard about it. And what happened <clears> next <throat> shocked the entire football world. It's the latest NFL scandal, and it's dominating the airwaves. So how does that deflate work, though? Gate. Deflate, you deflate gate. the football. Deflate From the morning shows to talk is, radio, how does that help you? Instead of talking about the Super Bowl, all eyes are on the ball. This ball. The NFL found that a lot of the past 12 balls what? were illegally underinflated, and the pass immediately got put on blast, getting called cheaters again by angry fans, and having every sports show on TV trash their name. They were even accusing Tom Brady of being the ringleader. Because, well, he was the one throwing the balls. And the NFL Max. found some <laughs> pretty sus it. texts between Brady and a couple of Patriots employees. Talking about air pumps and needles, blowing up balls. One of the dudes even called himself the deflated. So, after a year-long investigation, the NFL put their deflated balls right in the Patriots' mouth. Suspending so Tom Brady for four games, taking two first-round picks, and finding the team a million dollars. But it still wasn't enough to ruin Tom Brady's career. Because that season, he made the greatest comeback in NFL How's history. How does he keep doing See, it? after dealing with the suspension to start the year, Tom brought the Pats all the way to the Super Bowl. And despite being down 28 oh, the comeback ever. This, that's what this year the was? Game, they somehow came back and won it all. After I seen this, the Super Bowl. Tom actually Brady lied. became the undisputed GOAT. The greatest player in NFL history. And it's not even a debate. Now, between 2017 and 2020, the NFL had its craziest time period ever. The Browns lost every single game for almost two years straight. Aaron Hernandez went off the deep end. Pat's owner Robert Kraft was busted out of rub and tugs. Colin Kaepernick kneeled for the national anthem. Gronk broke the Super Bowl trophy. Saints fans the tried to sue the NFL. And Tom Brady went to the Buccaneers and won his seventh ring at 42 years old. That's insane. Yeah, things got pretty ridiculous. But now, we gotta talk about the most ridiculous player in NFL oh. history. <laughs> known for jumping into goalposts, nuts first, twerking after touchdowns, and even arriving to practice in a hot air balloon. I'm talking about Antonio Brown. And in 2022, CTS NFL saw lose his damn mind, because he literally retired in the middle of a game. Odd situation. Antonio Brown boiled over, very upset on the sideline, took off his shoulder pads. Mike Evans, OJ Howard, trying to convince him to keep them on. Obviously, they were unable to do so. He tossed his shoulder pads, stripped off his shirt and glove, threw those into the crowd, then ran across the field while the teams were still on the field, giving the crowd a peace out sign. I'll let you know when we hear something I wonder what he said. Thank you, Jen. It may be an Do y'all know what happened? In Tampa Bay. Yeah, that was actually the last time we ever saw AB in the NFL. And since then, the game has had some huge changes. Tom Brady retired, the Raiders moved to Las Vegas, hey. and stars like Patrick Mahomes are earning bags we've never seen, making a ridiculous $503 million for a 10-year contract. That is half a billion for throwing a damn ball. Well, uh, where the game is headed is even crazy. Because recently, the NFL dropped a documentary exposing their plans to implement artificial intelligence into football, where they what? announced that fans will know exactly what play a team's going to run. Because AI is going to start showing plays before they even have It's not Madden! thing with next gen stats. We can overlay player routes and understand the play before it even happens. Nope. Yeah. And that's not cheating. It, pretty soon, players won't be able to do anything without a camera on them. Because the NFL is going to let fans track them using AI software. Hell, they even want to put mics on every single play so fans can pick between who they want to hear. Also, there's the even been discussions of replacing refs entirely with AI. No. This is the future of the NFL. And keep in mind, we're only a couple of years into AI. Right. So in five or ten years, the game's going to look a whole lot different. Oh, we're going to be throwing computers, bro. Shit over, it's over, it's over.